How many people did it take for you to exist? The answer to such a question is going to be a bit complicated. With that, let's dive into some important considerations, the numbers, what it all means, and the takeaway. Now, there are many things to take into account when it comes to all of those who contributed to your existence. We're not dealing with just your parents here, rather, we're dealing with all your ancestors. Grandma, great-grandpa, the people in the creepy old photos. And of course, one could make an argument that step-parents, adopted parents, surrogate mothers, and even individuals who simply introduced your ancestors to one another could be incorporated into such a number. Unfortunately, it's quite hard to take into consideration all of those factors mathematically, so we won't be doing that. There are many areas where one has to draw the line. For instance, what are we going to even consider people? You and I are Homo sapiens sapiens, the second sapiens being our subspecies. All humans alive today, even with all of our differences, are Homo sapiens sapiens, also commonly referred to as anatomically modern humans. Key characteristics of anatomically modern humans showed up a long time ago. New findings are often pushing that date further and further back, though in general it's often agreed upon that 200,000 years ago is a relatively safe date for when humans first arrived. So let's go with that. Now, if there are on average about four or five generations per every 100 years, and let's go with five generations considering childbearing age has been quite young historically, how many people would we get? Remember, such a number would add your parents to your grandparents to your great-grandparents to your great-great-grandparents and so on and so forth. This little block of five generations, yours being the first one in this case, has 30 individuals responsible for making you. 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16. That number within itself is nothing extraordinary, of course, beyond the fact that it took 30 individuals making very specific life choices and decisions for you to exist. I can hardly get 30 people to make macaroni art without messing up, let alone coordinate them to all make a human being together. So before I bring up any painful memories, let's jump into the numbers. Now, this means I'm gonna have to introduce you to an important mathematical equation. One that you can use on your own if you'd like, and don't worry, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Uh, abort. Abort. Nope, that's scary looking. Not today. Nope. Fortunately, this can actually be simplified down to a smaller equation. 2 to the nth minus 2. The n represents the specific number of generations you're looking at. There's one catch, though. You have to add your generation to the overall number. So, for example, if we were to look at four generations back from you, like earlier, you would need to plug in a grand total of five generations into the equation. 2 to the power of 5 minus 2, and that does equal 30. Just doing 2 to the power of 4 gives you 16, which is wrong, and 2 to the power of 5 would give you 32, which is also wrong. You need to use this equation. So though this may seem a bit counterintuitive to some, you need to add yourself to the overall number of generations you were looking at within the context of this formula. And make sure other people are doing that too. Alright, so let's look at those numbers. 10 generations back from you, which would be about 200 years worth of ancestors, would give you 1,046 unique individuals. That's everybody added up together. It is a rather respectable number. But you will soon find out that these numbers do get a bit ridiculous. 20 generations back from you, which would give you about 400 years worth of ancestors, would give you over 2 million unique individuals. 50 generations back from you, which would give you about 1,000 years worth of ancestors, would give you over 2 quadrillion individual people. Okay, well, we have a problem. That's a lot of people. More people than are estimated to have actually ever been born. Including all the people alive today, there has been an estimated 100 billion people that have ever been born within the last 50,000 years. And our number far exceeds the population of the time as well. This is way too many unique individuals. But let's keep going. 100 generations back from you, which would be about 2,000 years worth of ancestors, would give you over 2 non-million people. The size of these numbers is getting as ridiculous as their names. That's 31 digits. 600 generations back from you, or about 12,000 years worth of ancestors, around the time human civilization first arose, you would get a number with over 181 digits. That is huge. So. What about 200,000 years worth of ancestors? That would be almost 10,000 generations worth of people. Well, it's going to be a pretty big number, so uh, let's just um, plug this in and go. This number is so large that it has 3,011 digits, being 39 
duomillennialium, a number so ridiculously big it sounds like I'm just making up words. Now, it's pretty obvious that some of these numbers, and especially this one, do not necessarily reflect reality. I mean, this number absolutely towers over the hypothesized total amount of atoms projected to exist in our universe. These numbers don't make any sense. So then, what does it all mean? Well, there is something going on here. The explanation for all of this is we humans, and most organisms, experience a phenomenon known as pedigree collapse. This basically indicates that our ancestors share common ancestors with one another. These astronomically large numbers assume that each generation has no individual that is related to one another. And that is definitely not the case. Some individuals throughout history very clearly demonstrate this. For example, the extreme case of Charles II of Spain. His mother was the niece to his father. His mother's father was the child of two first cousins. His father's father was the child of an uncle and niece relationship as well. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. As a result, Charles II of Spain only had 10 unique great-great-grandparents, where the average person has 16. Charles II of Spain only had 10 unique great-great-great-grandparents, where the average person has 32. So where the average person would have 62 unique ancestors five generations back from them in total, Charles only had 32 unique ancestors, give or take a few. Let's just say it's uh, quite challenging to count his family tree properly, it's so intertwined. And unsurprisingly, as a result of all of this, Charles suffered from severe genetic disorders due to generations upon generations of closely related individuals having children with one another in his family. Interestingly enough, two first cousins having a child with the woman being at a relatively young age posed about as much risk of having a child with a genetic disorder as a woman having a child in her 40s with an unrelated man. Where the risk becomes quite high of having a child born with a genetic disability when it comes to a couple that are closely related is often a result of both of them having a long family history of individuals having children with people who are also closely related to them as well. Which would explain why Charles, who is the son of an uncle and a niece, did fare as well as his grandfather, who is also the son of an uncle and a niece. But these types of discussions are definitely a topic for another day. Charles II of Spain is again an extreme case of pedigree collapse. A much less extreme example would be the relationship between former US President Franklin Roosevelt and his wife Eleanor Roosevelt. Franklin and Eleanor were fifth cousins, so where their children would have had two separate lines on both sides of the family, because of that common ancestor, it collapses into one. And that is something that we all will experience at multiple points throughout our family histories. Eventually, so many lines collapse in on one another that specific individuals far enough back in time have their family trees representative of everybody on Earth. Otherwise, it's likely their genetic line just died out. Some call this the identical ancestry point. So then, how many people did it take for you to exist? Well there will most likely never be an exact number. It really depends on both evidence and what we are going to be taking into consideration. The number of ancestors that you have will increase greatly and then plateau off. Thus, since how much time has passed since the dawn of humanity, we likely won't be able to determine it. That said, there is relatively enough evidence to make a hypothesis that since the dawn of human civilization, which was 12,000 years ago, you likely had six billion unique ancestors just under the current human population. Six billion individuals that had to make very specific life choices and decisions to get all the way to you. So then, what is the takeaway here? You are a continuation of reproductive success that has been going on since the dawn of life. A very large number of people had to make key decisions for you to be here. And due to those decisions, an unfathomable amount of people will not or did not ever get the opportunity to ever exist. The fact that you and I are here is mind-boggling, but here we are. And at the end of the day, all of us are related. The reason why we are all Homo sapiens sapiens is because genetic information has been flowing through all the major human populations since they were first perceived as distinct. Sure, some populations may have been isolated at certain points in history, but that's rarely the case nowadays outside of a few debatable exceptions. And often that common ancestry may be more recent than what some may initially believe. Every little bit of your ancestry still required an astronomical amount of people to ultimately get to you. 
and you will find that you have pedigree collapse in your family. Though it may seem gross, it is the reality of the human context. So lastly, when it comes to asking how many people did it take for you to exist, maybe we should think of it less in the context of specific numbers, and more in terms of just the outcome. How many people did it take for you to exist? Eh, just enough. And that concludes the video. My question for you guys is, what kind of factors do you think are important when it comes to considering how many people it took for you to exist? Did people introduce your parents? Are you adopted? Are these things that matter to you? Along with any other factors I didn't even mention. And with all of that said and done, my name's Dale, this is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning and thinking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. That would really help me out. And also, please feel free to check out some of my other content over the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed. Have a good one.